Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show. Katie Hopkins is with us all the way from England. Good evening, Katie. Good evening to you and thank you very much for having me on. So let's talk about the last, oh, I don't know, bazillion developments in the election that just will not stop. Um, the latest is the Pennsylvania First Appeals Court had frozen the certification of the Pennsylvania electors. Um, a higher court just flipped on that one, and it's on its way to the Supreme Court now. Um, the big news, I suppose, is that in the last few days, they had a hearing in Pennsylvania where the amount of evidence that was submitted that proved fraud wasn't a little bit. It was as if they backed up a dump truck and opened up the lift gate and just poured four or five tons of information onto the Pennsylvania Senate. You'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to get it. Mm. What's your take? I, I so agree with you. You know, not only is there, you know, this mountain of evidence uh, that it seems that, as you say, people are being deaf, dumb and blind to ignore. There's also this other layer to this, isn't there? This is the layer that you feel when you're amongst Trump supporters. You know, the thing I felt for three months with you guys is that you, you know that this election was fraudulent. You know this wasn't how it went. I was just reading uh, what the judge said, the guy that threw out uh, this latest appeal from the Trump campaign. He said, voters, not lawyers, choose the president. Ballots, not briefs, decide the elections. The ballots here are governed by Pennsylvania election law. But in many ways, so he's using that phrase when he's throwing out the appeal by the Trump campaign, but in many ways, that's exactly what we're asking for. Good Americans and Trump supporters are asking for voters to choose the president. We're asking for actual ballots to decide who's gonna be the president. And the problem is, that's not what we think we've got. That's not, I say we again, I'm the, I know I'm the outsider, but that's not what we've got. We haven't got voters choosing, we haven't got you know, ballots choosing, we've got fraudulent ballots and possibly, you know, corrupted machines. So um, in some ways we agree with this judge, even though he's thrown out the appeal isn't on our side. And maybe we can agree, Barry, it's a good thing it's off to the Supreme Court. Maybe that's the long play always of Trump and the team is to get all these through to Supreme Court and see if that can work. Well, quite frankly, and I want to capitalize um, on the last sentence you said, if this judge had sided with the lower court, the other side would have appeal, appealed to the same Supreme Court anyway. So it needs to get to the highest court in the land from which there is no appeal, no different than Bush v. Gore in 2000. The Supreme Court had to make the decision. But here's the lay of the land now, Katie. Uh, Trump has 232 electoral votes. Obviously, you need 270 on the nose or higher to be the next president. Pennsylvania has 20. Massive fraud in Pennsylvania. Michigan has 16 and Georgia has mm -hmm. 16. And the monster lawsuit from Sidney Powell went in a couple days ago. Um, I think 105 pages <laughs> filled with evidence and affidavits and, and all the proof from everywhere, including uh, army intelligence. You add all those up, if three states can be flipped and Trump isn't at 232, he's at 284, 14 more than needed. But here's my question. The press today is making fun of Sidney Powell's lawsuit because there were typos, because they worked around the clock for like a week with a whole team of lawyers and there are typos in it. Nobody wants to respond to the charges. Do they just want Trump out that badly? Isn't it always the way as well, Barry, that, you know, I think many of us have felt this over 
years and obviously not with the magnitude that lovely Sidney Powell's facing or Trump, but this way about when you have an argument that you present and the other side have no way of coming back, their only tool, and it's a tool they use over and over, it's like they have a playbook, isn't it? And they open it up and they say, oh yes, how do we deal with this? Oh, we discredit not the argument, but the individual. And they do that thing where they have to ridicule me or they have to say we look this way or they have to rip you apart for how you dress or the way you wear your hair. And, and it's that same sort of play out here, isn't it? Let's ridicule Sydney Powell because there was the odd typo that she won't have had anything to do with anyway. Let's not address the substance of the matter. And I so admire Sydney Powell through all of this because none of this can be easy. You know, I think we forget, don't we, sometimes um, that these huge personalities, Sydney Powell, you know, Kraken, this kind of hashtags, they get Trump. Behind it all, they're still people that get in the shower in the morning, have to feed themselves, have their own things going on in their heads, and somehow they're enduring all of this. And I, I so admire her, and I sometimes feel like, you know, when I see it as a picture, it's like you have Sydney Powell, and all of us trying to like hold her up, you know, behind her, just trying to like keep her going because, you know, these guys are really the firewall, aren't they? They're taking all of the incoming arrows and behind them is all of our hope and our dreams and everything that we felt when we were so sure that, that Trump would win this. So um, Sydney Powell, I so admire, but we're seeing the same thing on this side of the pond, just this endless sort of ridicule of the lady in, in every way, actually. And it, it's horrible to watch yet again. Well, yeah, you, you touched on something that I've often admired about Trump, um, which is the sheer strength of his will. I watched the press conference yesterday and uh, he talked about election fraud in Georgia and in Pennsylvania and in Michigan. And he, he called out a, a lot mm -hmm. of the issues that have been raised in the public hearings now that you know, people were sticking in uh, USB drives into the machines and all of a sudden the tallies were changing. I mean, the, that's election fraud on a federal level that could send you to prison for 20 years. And then mm -hmm. the reporters opened up the questions, when are you going to concede? When are you going to move out? Are you going to refuse to move out? As if they had heard nothing mm -hmm. and hate him so much that whatever he said, they had their questions as if the facts just don't matter. It's exactly that. And, and can you imagine sat there, you are the office of the president. You know, Trump isn't just Trump the man. Trump is the office of the United States of America, the presidential office. And I think that's when he snapped at the reporter and reminded them, I am the president. And I think that's so important because I think you know, and um, I, I remember it being mentioned way back when he was first inaugurated that even if you didn't respect the man, you respect the office of the president of the United States of America. And I think that separation is important. I think he did such a great thing to remind the press of that in a very sharp way, which is have some respect for the office. Um, and I think that matters. I also think you always see with Trump and you see it when you see his interactions with individuals, the way he cares, the way he shakes everybody's hand, um, the way that he's interacted with Emily Murphy, who is the chief of government services administration. I'm reading that so I'd get it correct. But you could see how he hasn't conceded. I don't believe he will ever concede in any specific art articulation of that. But what he doesn't want is the chief of the government service administration to be hurt any more than she has been. You know, you can feel him do that thing where he puts his wings out and he, and he wants to tuck her under a wing. Because obviously, because she wasn't uh, starting that handover changeover process, she was coming under enormous attack. And he said, listen, we will start the transition if only the attacks only. And, and I think that's so typical of Trump the man, is that he doesn't want to see someone hurt and caught up in the madness that is unfolding right now. Um, but I love that he won't concede. I love that he's holding fast. And I think it does allow all of us some 
even even if and, and it's a question that I'll put back to you I think that do, do you believe that eventually Biden is going to be there on inauguration day but even if the worst was to happen and that was to be true Trump has has prevailed still through all of this and there is something glorious about that I have a great deal of faith that the Supreme Court will do the right thing the Pennsylvania ruling that I read as well um, addressed the votes as if they were all legitimate. And that is the factual determination that has yet to be proven one way or mm -hmm. another. Yes, there are more votes for Biden. Nobody with a brain questions that. The question is, are they legitimate or are they illegitimate? Until mm -hmm. there has been a finding of fact in one way or another that's believable uh, in front of a court, uh, Biden is not the president-elect. We don't have a president-elect, and we won't until someone decides what to do with the overvotes or the votes that didn't occur but are in the machines or the votes that were maybe placed four times on behalf of one person. And I could go on for half an hour with all the irregularities that have been found, they are going to have to be adjudicated. They have not been, except in the mainstream media that just wants to know when is Trump moving out. Yeah, and, and the good thing for us there is that, you know, in the history of Trump, have we ever seen him cave to pressure, particularly pressure from the fake news? Never, never, never. In fact, we could argue it's his favorite sport when he's got them engaged in this way. And Barry, you know, the fake news, they know as well, if, if Trump ever left office, their job's about to become really, really hard because Biden is not going to be interesting. He is not going to feed the material in the way they've just had it so easy for four years. And, and I love that as well. They're going to struggle with Biden because he's so utterly dull. You know, the, well, the media are going to have to work for a living for change. Katie, he can barely talk. I mean, come <laughs> on. You know, it's going to be the cover up of all cover ups. This is sort of like, you know, nobody in America knew that FDR was in a wheelchair. Nobody knew that JFK had five mistresses and on and on and on because the press laid down on the job and covered it up. We'll continue in our next segment. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report and a special thanks to my partner, Katie Hopkins. Uh, for those of you that are not signed up yet, please take out your cell phone and send the message TRUTH to 88202 and push send. You will be automatically subscribed to our free, free text message alert system. You'll get all of our stuff like Katie and Barry on your cell phone always for free because we never charge for content. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.